I remember vividly the first time I encountered the idea of digital immortality nearly a decade ago. I was still a student when I stumbled upon a website advertising post-mortem avatars. Intrigued by this idea, a wave of questions began to surface. Where are these technologies taking us? Why do we turn to AI in such intimate moments of death and dying? Is digital immortality really part of the future we desire? My name is Katarzyna nowaczek basińska and I am the principal investigator of the project Imaginaries of Immortality in the Age of AI, an intercultural analysis founded by Schmidt Sciences and hosted by the Leverhulme Center for the Future of Intelligence at the University of Cambridge. Together with my team, I've traveled thousands of kilometers through Poland, India, and China to explore how people from different cultural backgrounds make sense of digital immortality. Over the past few months, we've collaborated across multiple time zones, partnered with five international institutions, and engaged in deep conversations with more than 30 local experts and 70 non-experts. It's been a journey shaped by language barriers, cultural nuances, and above all, a profound opportunity to listen to the diverse imaginaries people hold about immortality, death, memory, and what it means to live on. In each location, the project's research methods consisted of two main activities, an experts workshop and three focus groups titled Immortality Over Dinner. The experts workshops were designed for individuals working at the intersection of death, grief, and technology. We engage in conversation with artists, academics, palliative care professionals, members of the funeral industry, community organizers, and spiritual and religious leaders. We were guided by the belief that understanding digital immortality requires a collected effort, one that brings together diverse perspectives, skills, experiences, and values. We began our exploration in November 2024 in Poznań, Poland, by examining the ideas, norms, and traditions that surface in discussions around the digital immortality. Already today, we've heard fascinating insights about the influence of the Catholic Church in Poland and the tensions between science and technology on the one hand and religion on the other. We've had really interesting insights about the particularities of Polish rituals around death and the ways in which digital technology might be used to help people to connect with their loved ones. And at the same time, we've heard skepticism and ethical considerations. Our next stop in February 2025 was India, New Delhi, a vibrant cosmopolitan city. There, conversations with local experts delved into the interplay between tradition and modernity and how new technologies shape perceptions and experiences of death, dying and grief. I've also been really curious about this technology for two reasons. One is that it is a very new kind of application and it's troubling. It's, um, it's changing and destabilizing what is already a very challenging human experience. We're not trained to deal with death. It's such a dark subject and we don't know how to deal with it. And here's a technology application that is forcing us to confront, um, confront death, confront what comes after death. Um, and by virtue of that, what it means to be human. The final stop on this intense academic and cultural journey was Beijing, China, visited in April 2025 a place where an incredibly rich and long philosophical tradition intersects with emerging technologies, raising new questions and unexpected dilemmas. So for example, we've heard from Taoists and you know, Taoism has always been committed to the pursuit of immortality and the Taoist philosophers we've spoken to have been really enthusiastic about the possibility of digital technology in helping them realize this ancient dream of immortality. But at the same time, we've spoken to Buddhist philosophers who think this is all just a distraction, that we ought to be letting go of worldly desires and worldly things and worldly attachments. And digital immortality might be a way of holding on to those when we ought to be letting go. 
In addition to in-depth discussions, experts in all three locations participated in two speculative design exercises moderated by Dr. Tomasz Holanek, who took on the role of a representative from a fictional US-based tech company. The experts acted as consultants, offering culturally grounded, critical, and sensitive advice on how to design digital immortality products. What was clear from the second exercise, again in all three locations in India, Poland and China, was that the digital afterlife industry cannot be only profit-driven and that the duty of care should be guiding all design choices made in this space. For instance, making sure that the services that the industry provides are not addictive. While the insights from our experts' workshops were invaluable, this project also champions the idea that high-level strategies surrounding death, dying and immortality should be rooted in everyday experiences and intimate practices. To truly attune ourselves to those personal stories, we hosted nine Immortality Over Dinner events in Poznań, New Delhi and Beijing, bringing together participants with no expertise in digital immortality. Around the table were younger and older guests, believers and non-believers, professors and individuals with diverse educational backgrounds, people who had experienced loss and those who had not yet faced it. Each dinner began with a screening of the documentary Eternal You, directed by Hans Bloch and Moritz Rieswig. Then we shared a meal where we talked, laughed and cried together, embracing diverse perspectives with openness and care. During those meetings we spoke about very delicate matters, so it was crucial to create an atmosphere in which people feel safe, in which they can share very personal and intimate stories and opinions. So that's why we did not set it up as a classical academic research format, but I designed it as a ceremony in a ritual way. So it was an experience that was not only meant to inspire people on an intellectual level, but there were sensual elements that spoke more to our subconscious, that uh, opened people to get in touch with their bodies, with their different senses and with their emotions. At the end of each dinner, Participants were invited to take part in a short photo session conducted by the professional photographer Tomasz Szuda. On one level, it extended the atmosphere of the evening, intimate, reflective, and grounded in shared presence. On another, it gently echoed the tradition of post-mortem portraits, one of the photography's earliest roles in preserving the image of the deceased. The resulting black and white portraits of participants offered a subtle visual dialogue with the photographs of departed loved ones they had been asked to bring, quietly bridging past and present, life and death. What have we taken away from this intellectually and emotionally charged cross-cultural dialogue? First and foremost, we learned that navigating digital immortality goes beyond technological innovation. It shakes the core of who we are, opening the possibilities to reimagine a future. A future where we find new ways to restore communities that can support us through the end of life. We encourage new kinds of professionals to help us steward our post-mortem legacies with care. We implement thoughtful design, meaningful regulation, inclusive ethical guidelines and stronger protection for the users of these technologies. And above all, a future where AI helps us confront death in a responsible, meaningful and compassionate way, deepening our understanding of what it means to be human. <laughs>